Hello everybody, this is Terry Jeanette with The Tapping Flamingo and today in the mail I received my, let's see what month is this, September 2020 bead or bargain bead box monthly subscription. I want to share with you what I got and then we're going to create. So I went ahead and opened it. It comes in a, a really pretty colored mailer and then they wrap it in tissue paper and then <clears throat> they put it in a drawstring organza bag. And uh, so I went ahead to keep from all the rattling, opened all, it all up. Let's see what we have here. You know what? Interesting. Oh, here it is. <laughs> they always send a little piece of paper that explains what everything is. Um, it gives you a theme, like this month's theme is Fancy Forest. Hmm, interesting. Gemstones in autumnal hues take center stage in this month's collection. I love that they're doing that. Um, sometimes they'll send things that already passed. Like, for instance, maybe Valentine's, they'll send it like the week before Valentine's Day. So that really doesn't give you time to create. So I like that they're sending something. It's fall and I have time to create and give it as a gift or sell it if I want. Um, okay, it says Fancy Jasper shows off a wide variety of rich fall colors complemented with a full strand of three millimeter fascinated garnet rounds, glass leaves, sparkling crystals, and a selection of woodland themed copper. Love copper uh, findings complete the set. We've also included a free bonus pendant from our sister store, uh, bead box bargain. I always get them mixed up. You got bargain bead box and bead box bargains. They're the same. One of them is the monthly subscription and the other one is actually a store where you can buy um, some really beautiful items and um, the monthly subscription actually uh, shows you what they some of the things that they have available. Also um, you get a 30% coupon and you get an opportunity to um, to get, let's see, a con uh, there's a contest. I'm just making sure they still have this. Um, you could get a $50 gift certificate. Wow, I think it used to be a $25 gift certificate because I've won it once and it was only a $25 gift certificate. Maybe this time I'll, I'll enter it and see what happens. All right, so I've got everything in order and um, we're just gonna go down the list here. Uh, there are some tree charms there's um, five of those. There's some um, little copper spacer beads. We have a leaf pendant. This is really pretty. And here are the tree charms. Tree of life. Like, a lot of people like those. Uh, number four, we have uh, some bamboo toggle clasps. And then we have... <clears throat> Oh, these are some olive branch beads. And then number six. Okay. Actually, six and nine look alike. So I got them mixed up. Let's switch them over. Okay. Number six is uh, fancy jasper round beads. Those are really pretty. And then we have a number seven. We've got some chain, and then eight was the free thing that they were talking about, and it's a tree of life pendant. That's really pretty. Um, tourmaline is the name of the stones in there. And then we have uh, some tree of life links. These would make nice uh, bracelets. Maybe I'll make some and show you what they look like. Uh, let's see, number 10. <clears throat> oh, these are leaf glass leaf charms. I've had these in like a white iridescence before. These are pretty. These are more of a gold, fall colors. And then interesting, I actually have two 11s. Um, normally they don't send you two 11s. Somebody goofed. I hope I don't have somebody else's 11. Um, but anyway, I'm actually really happy because I love these. These are bead caps, and I use bead caps a lot. I started using them when I was introduced to Bead Box Bargain. Uh, number 12 here is Fancy Jasper Rondell Beads. 
And then we have some more fancy jasper. These are 10 millimeter beads. And then we have some crystals. <clears throat> and then chandelier components. Yay, I was hoping so. I mean, I'm going to open these up. I have really been getting into the chandelier earrings. I think they are so cool. Okay, this one's a little bent. So I'll have to fix that. But I love just dangling little crystals off there. And anyway, but those are going to be fun. Definitely we'll have to make something out of those. And then the next one is some more crystals. They're little crystal coin beans. They're blue-green champagne is what they're calling them. Um, and then a focal made from fancy jasper. And I'm just running through these real quick this time because I want to create. And I don't want this video to be forever long. Number 18, we have peach, champagne, peach champagne, uh, shimmer crystals. And let's see, 19 are some garnet. They look like crystals, little garnet crystals. They are garnet finely faceted round beads. Ooh, these are going to be fun. I love those. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the last thing, there's 20 items. These are slate green iris crystal polygon beads. So those are going to be fun. Those are pretty. So we have a total of 20 items, actually 21 items because I got two of something. And they're saying that this is a $72 value. Uh, now I've been getting these shipments for quite some time and they've gone up since I started getting them and I don't know how much they are right now but they're nothing near $72 and this probably is pretty accurate about a $72 value anyway I am going to go gather some stuff up and create right on the spot here so stay tuned all right I think I have everything gathered up that I need but if I don't I'll just pause you and go get it <laughs> Um, something that I have been working on a lot lately are uh, some very bohemian hippie type um, necklaces. Uh, I, I used to make a lot of them and then I kind of got away from it. And then the other day uh, I made one and it sold like within 30 minutes. And then I made uh, three more and two more went out the window. So I'm like, hmm. Maybe I should make these. Uh, plus the fact, I, I really like them. Here's one right here. It's just uh, I take hemp and I, cro I crochet it, and then I add different stuff. This right here is um, a bead that I actually made from um, clay, terracotta clay, and added some shells and beads and just kind of roughed up the, the hemp, and then I, I added a, a clay bead here. And I can put my essential oils on them. <clears throat> but this one, I think what I'm going to do is use this, which is a fancy Jasper round. And I am going to wire it um, so that it will have a bale. I have already uh, crocheted <clears throat> a piece from hemp. I just took uh, two pieces, and if you know how to do a chain stitch, just I did a chain stitch until I got the length that I wanted kind of just measured it out and I made sure to leave some ends now I'm not going to get into the details and this isn't a tutorial on how to as much it is how I go about creating because I have had a lot of people ask me how do you come up with some of your designs I could never do that well it takes a little bit of time and sometimes you have to lay it out and let it kind of just sit there and then you think about it and you walk past it and you go, oh, I don't like that anymore. Oh, or you might like it and you start creating and then all of a sudden you start adding things in as you create. That happens to me a lot. But anyway, <clears throat> I kind of think I know what I want to do with this one, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to pull, um, pull a little wire here. 
and make the bale. Very simple. I actually, because these stones are so beautiful, I don't really want to um, create something that's going to hide all the, the variations of color in them. And so I just want something very simple. And basically you just put your wire in and twist it like this. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes when I twist my wire, it's all weird. But that's okay because you're not going to really see it. So then I'll I get either some round nose pliers or I actually have um, these type pliers. Or you could use a pencil, something, anything round. But I want to use the bigger portion of this. And I just loop this around and then wrap it around to make my bale. And you're going to get to a point where you got all these things sticking out. And I, I don't usually cut them unless I, I have enough. I like a big, uh, a lot of wire on here. I just like the look of it. So I don't really usually cut it. But I'll continue to wrap these. And you want to make sure that your wire is tucked in. And you just squeeze it into a place where it's going to hide that. And once I get it squeezed in there, I kind of feel to see if it is really hidden and tucked in there because you don't want this to scratch your clothes or your neck. The, this one's going to be long, so it would be more that it, it would be um, scratching your clothes. Anyway, I'm going to work on this a little bit more, and when I get it to the point that I like it, I'll be back. All right, so I got it wired, and then when um, I was kind of looking at some of the stuff, I thought, you know what? I have five of these. I can make earrings, but then I'm going to have an extra one. So I decided to go ahead and add it to this. Um, it's small enough where you can still see um, the pretty uh, different colors in this, um, but it's big enough. I don't know. I just like the movement. So I decided to add that. And that's what happens sometimes. You, you think one way, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, wait a minute, maybe I'll add that. And so what I did is I took the wire, and I just put it through the hole, and put it through the hole here, and wrapped one side. And then I'm just finishing up wrapping this, and I'm just going to kind of um, hide all my little ends, and then clip it. And finish tucking that last in to keep it from scratching your skin or your clothes. And sometimes I have to take my glasses off to do this because my eyes aren't what they used to be. Anyway, there we go. So I've got this all wired and ready to go. I don't feel any scratches. So the next thing I want to do is I've already crocheted this and I would like to put, I always try to put some type of a bead on here. I just think it makes it look finished, but I'm not for sure I'm going to be able to fit all of these into these holes. I think the holes are smaller. So let's see what happens. You think you have all these neat ideas, and then it's not going to work. <laughs> That's why when you go and actually buy stuff for a project, you need to make sure everything's going to be okay. And no, they're not going to fit. In fact, I may have a hard time getting just one strand to fit. One strand will fit. So, what I could do, and I've done this before, is put, I don't think that's going to work. So, scratch that idea. <laughs> but I still am going to use these. 
in some form. All right, so I went digging around in my stash of wood beads and I came across these two. One's a little bit bigger than the other and also one's a little bit more brown and one's a little bit more rust, kind of more the coppery. So I don't know if I want to use that one or the more brown one. First off, let's see if they fit. I think they're going to. They got pretty big holes. So you can string them on here and then just kind of get a look of what you like the best. There's that look. When you're creating, it's a lot of trial and error. <laughs> and then we have this look. Hmm. I kind of wish that this was the bigger bead. But you know what? I think I'm going to use this. It's a pretty good match for the copper instead of the brown. Let me put the brown away. By the way, if you have a bead, some of these wooden beads, they're kind of, um, they have big holes, but they're not real clear um, where you can um, thread something in there very easily. I use a bead reamer, and basically you just put it in there and kind of clean it up. And, uh, and you can make bigger holes with that on certain beads, but you've got to be careful because uh, you could actually break your bead. I know that personally. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to thread that in there, and then I'm going to tie a couple of overhand knots because I don't want the bead to slip off, which that can happen. Make sure they're tight. And then we'll do another one. And when you do the second overhand knot, you want to make sure that you don't wind up having knots side by side. So you just kind of have to feed it, like I feed it on top of there. And then just kind of pull the ends here. And I probably should have left a few more, not inches, but maybe an inch. These are kind of getting short, and I like to keep these. I think I'll have enough, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> All right, so I have that. Now I'm going to add this guy to it. And basically, I do it differently sometimes. I'll take two pieces, thread it in there, and just tie some knots. A couple, let's see, one. But don't tie it really tight. You want to have a little bit of a loop because if you tie it really tight, then it doesn't dangle. Well, it looks like this one might. But sometimes it won't dang, you won't have that movement. It'll just be really stiff. So I like to have it a little bit loose. Um, so I do two knots. Two over, just like you're tying a shoe, but make a knot. And then I'm going to make an overhand knot. Because I just want to make sure this piece stays together. And this is when I like to use a crochet hook. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to get those short pieces in there. Sure, I got. See, I only have three pieces, so I'm missing a piece. Oh, I'm gonna have to do it again. All right, I got it all tied on there. It's really secure. It's not gonna come off unless you cut it off. Um, and the next thing I want to do is. To kind of trim it up here, and then I need to. Um, I like to shred these a little bit, but before I do that, I want to make sure I don't want to add any beads. Um, this one, see, I just kind of shredded it, I didn't add any beads to it, it's just kind of got that bohemian, unfinished uh, look, I guess you could say. This one, um, this one to me looks kind of southwestern. 
bohemian. But uh, I added beads to it. This one I added beads up higher. So, you know, do you, do you want to add beads or not? So let's look and see what I have. Um, by the way, let me show you what I'm using. I'm using this. I got it at Walmart. And when I crocheted, I crocheted two pieces together. Um, but some of, some of my necklaces, they're not as thick. I just do one. Anyway, let's see. What do we want to do? Do we want to add large beads to it or crystals? We could also add these little guys. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if I really want to add anything. I think I just want to leave it simple. So what I'm going to do, these are all kind of all over the place. I'm going to actually uh, trim them so they're even. And then I'm going to um, twist them and kind of shred. I don't know if that's a decent word for this, but I just kind of pull the fibers apart. And um, sometimes I might need to have a, a pin to do it with, but see how I just tore it apart like that. I'm going to go finish this up, and I'll be back. All finished. I actually finished up the necklace and made a pair of earrings. Remember those fancy Jasper uh, 10 millimeter beads I said I was going to do something with? I made some earrings with them and they're a perfect match. So here is the necklace all done. I love this. I love the way these come out and they're good for layering too. And then here are the earrings. They're not really big and heavy, but they do make a statement. So if you are into the Tree of Life, this would be a great set for you. If you like to create like I do, you should think about getting a subscription to Bargain Bead Box. I will actually leave a link to Bargain Bead Box and Bead Box Bargain down um, in the description below and I hope you go check me out on TikTok, Instagram, uh, Facebook. <laughs> anyway, I have all my links down there and of course I have my Etsy shop. Thanks for stopping by and watching. Hope you all have a wonderful day. This is Terry Jeanette with the Tapping Flamingo signing out for now. Bye-bye.